week. Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in this video, I'm going to be doing my guide for Shiva and Ramu, the Double Summon EX2. This is, uh, this was kind of a struggle for me. I probably took about 40 or so attempts to actually finally get it. So the team setup, I think, is kind of important. You can do this with a lot of different teams. At least I've seen videos of various people doing it. And I know there are a lot of videos out there. But for those of you who want the Nightlight 9 take, I'm going to show you. So starting off, I'm going to start with Aerith. Um, if you want to see what I've got here, these are the high wind ability stats. I've mostly, as far as over boosting, always focused on defensive stats first. So I've been trying to at least five star everything that's got a boost to physical or magical defense. And I typically prioritize magical defense. Uh, so you can see those here. Other than that, you want to start, I think, when you're building these teams, thinking about survivability first, because the moves hit pretty hard. And so magic defense, HP, and resistance to lightning and ice are going to be what I'm focusing on here. Now, one person is going to have to be kind of designated as your tank. And typically that's going to be the person, I believe, they almost always, if not as a rule, always target the person with the highest HP. I've seen a lot of people do it with Barret in a similar setup. I couldn't make it work with Barret. So this is what I use with Aerith. So Aerith has the most HP of anybody. You can see Barret has 11.5. Tifa only has 10k. And Aerith has 14 all right, with that in mind, I'm going to show you the abilities first, and then I'm going to go into how I kind of built that up. So, Ice Resist 3 and Lightning Resist 5. So that's going to be 20% resistance to Ice and 40% resistance to Lightning. Again, she's taking most of the damage, and remember, for Kimura Wan to actually proc the magic defense, you have to be above 70% HP. So that's kind of something I always try to keep in mind and why... You know, if she's going to be the tank, she needs the maximum resistances because I, you will need to apply the AOE magic defense increase quite often. That's probably the most important thing as far as abilities go. Other than that, <clears throat> trying to get my heal stat up, you know, as high as I can also. We're using her anniversary weapon, and that's because the ATB boost is really, really nice. And it's also really good to boost Tifa's magic attack. In my build, Tifa is probably doing like 85 to 90% of my overall damage. So that's something I'm constantly keeping in mind. As far as brands, I mean, nothing really special on a lot of these, but I can tell you I always kind of favor magic defense, generally speaking. So that's going to be kind of a lot of also how I was able to get some of these higher magic numbers. We're using her costume from Anniversary as well, uh, mostly because this physical and magical defense plus 20 and healing potency is everything we need on Aerith. The boost attack all allies is also very helpful for Tifa. We've got the uh, ultimate weapon here. We've got the shortest cooldown AoE heal. And then for these, I went with magic defense priority. So if you see here, I think plus 15 is my highest materia. This Cura, I mean, it does kind of help for a single target, but mostly it's also one of my highest magic defense materias. And then here, this is just a good HP and heal, and it's kind of the best combination I had of both of those to help her be survivable. Um, over here, we have Mithril Rod. I don't even have a brand on any of her sub weapons, by the way. And this is Magic Defense Lightning Resist, so everything that I need for her. This over here is Lightning Resist HP and Ice Resist HP. So. This is how, you know, we built up the HP this high, the magic defense, the resistances, all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, and that is that is Aerith. Coming over to Barret, he is our main utility hero. And so, again, trying to keep the magic defense high because the less, basically, the less damage you're taking, the better it's going to be because you need to survive. And we're using Electro Cannon as our first and foremost probably survivability technique because the magic attack decrease being aoe is very important for this battle um even though it's only mid potency instead of you know high it doesn't matter because it's hitting both of them at the same time which is super super valuable now the only reason that i have this in the main hand is one the magic ability potency is nice to have on him because although 
Tifa is doing most of the damage. He still is doing some damage with the fire, uh, with his summon, which I'll cover in a moment. Also, this circle sigil break is very key for my build. Um, down here, we have Shark Slayer. And this was a weapon that I've been trying to get. I mean, I don't think I've wishlisted it much, but I did try to pull for it originally, and I've just never had picked up a copy. So I actually used my one and only weapon voucher to pick up a copy to do this. And also then I, I had some parts to make it Obi-Wan. Uh, it's pretty nice because it gives survivability. It gives buff debuff extension, which is also pretty good for what his role is in this fight. But mostly you're looking at fire resist and water resist. So it's got both breaches that you need to do extra damage to each of these summons. And so you don't really have to worry about trying to remember, you know, which which one of these has which breach. You just use this. It also has a diamond sigil break, which is very important. And I think something that you really want to have for this battle. I'm going to back out real quick and show you one thing. If you haven't looked, they do this guard sync. And basically what that does is that, you know, when you try to debuff their physical or magical defense, it splits the debuff between the two of them. And so having the AOE is actually really nice for that uh, because then, you know, even though they're splitting it, it's, it's still hitting both of them. Uh, other than that, with Barrett, we are using uh, Crimson Flare here, and that is just to do fire damage. The reason I think it's a little bit better than Ifrit is because it also boosts Tifa's fire potency by mid, uh, which makes it pretty pretty damn good because she is our main damage dealer and we're gonna make her fire potency slightly weaker than water and I'll kind of get into that as well. For Materias, um, I went with this one just because of HP. It is nice that it has magic defense, but if you notice 13.6%, which is allowing me to get to 11.5 without having to put many HP weapons on him. Uh, his Electro Armor, this is actually what I ended up picking up with my voucher, the one that they gave us for anniversary. Uh, I was torn between him and red. I went with this because I was trying to make Tank Bear at work. I think it's still a good pickup, but yes, that's how I got that. Uh, magic Defense is what I'm prioritizing with this Materia. And this one here, Magic Defense as well, but with Circle in mind to have the extra circle break. Uh, here, he is just completely utility again, even with his sub weapons. Lightning resist is great for him. Magic defense, although, is what is really important here. Same with this weapon, lightning resist, great. Magic defense, all very important. And then here, this is ice resist, magic defense, just for him. So if you look at his abilities, the number one thing I'm looking at is trying to get ice and lightning resist, both the three, that was my goal with most of my party, except for you're going to see in a second here with Tifa. I was not able to hit that because at the end of the day, somebody has to be able to do the damage. So here's what I have. Now, I went for both of these weapons very hard in wish lists. Uh, I can tell you I pulled on the initial banner for Shell Knuckles and was only able to get it's like OB2. And so I've gotten it all the way to OB10 simply by wish listing it all the way up until I got there. I did get... Um, the bunny gloves, I think, around OB5 or 6 from the initial banner, and then wishlisted it up as well. So, she's our main damage dealer, so we need water and fire. That's why these come into play. There's a few different reasons that I think it works well to put bunny gloves in the main hand. One, because it's going to give the water potency, uh, and I think that that's pretty nice because we're going to be using Leviathan on her, and I don't really have... I mean, ultimately, Leviathan's just going to be doing more damage than the one Barrett uses, so I think that works. Uh, it's got an X sigil breakdown here, which does somewhat come in handy for the battles. And again, I prioritize magic defense even on her materials. Um, magic attack as much as possible, but magic defense was very important. And just to note, Shell Knuckles also has the same X sigil break, so you could... I think swap these around, you know, or I think there's multiple ways you could do this, but this is how I did it. Uh, here, I just went with the Bahamut suit, and I have both of our Arcanums for water and fire. The problem is because you need to be able to do both, and you don't want to kill one summon well before you kill the other. It's one of those deals where kind of, if you kill one, you're on a clock to kill the other before they do kind of like a mega move, you know what I mean? That that generally wipes me every time it's happened. 
Uh, the Bahamut's Whisper, though, also pretty good for damage on her. Boost attack all allies. You know, it's it's got everything we need. And so for that reason, we're going to be basically um, prioritizing magic ability potency more than we normally would over a specific elemental damage type. And I'm going to show that in just a moment. But first, I'll go over her materials. Uh, we have one defaith because I just need a little bit of help. Uh, most of their, when they do their double move, you need, I needed to have them at least both down one tier uh, on magic attack and my whole party at least, you know, mid potency or higher magic defense up in order to survive. Otherwise, Tifa would usually die. So the defaith helps with that. Again, I just created ones until I got one with a magic defense stat because that's the number one thing that I was needing on her. Uh, down here, this is just my highest magic defense, or sorry, magic attack materia. Uh, it's nice that it does have some magic defense as well. And then here, you know, I'm stuck with X and uh, I needed an X sigil break, but it's got good magic defense as well. So for abilities on Tifa, this is what we're looking at. Boost fire potency three, uh, not impressive by any means, 25% bonus damage. Water potency four for 40%, and that's just because it's in the main hand. Lightning resist three. Um, which is 20% resistance to lightning. I do not have ice resist on her. I just couldn't really fit it into the build, but that's one of the reasons I wanted her magic defense to be as high as possible. Um, boost magic ability potency level four. So we're getting a 45% boost to you know magic attack when command stance is maxed. All right, that covers all of her main stuff. Coming over to sub equipment, We've got the Bahamut Fangs, and this is just for magic attack and boost magic ability potency. Um, some of the stuff on the brands are also pretty good. Magic defense plus seven coming in. Uh, this same thing, magic attack, magic ability potency. And the reason I'm normally going for the magic attack all is just because when you look at her abilities, um, I already had magic attack maxed. And so going for more magic attacks, not gonna boost this stat right here but the magic attack all will stack on top of that. And then last we have Nameless, and this is just because it provides a nice 40 HP boost and then also lightning resist. And so, uh, and I think also they've got some magic defense on the brand there. So that's part of, you know, how we got that. That's how we got our lightning resist and everything else. And, and you can see even with that 40 uh, our ability boost on Nameless, she's still only at 10,000, um, but if you play it right with this, I mean, you're able to essentially keep her alive. Well, sometimes just barely, but that's that's okay. And we're going to get into the fight. The only thing I would really call attention to is if you're running this particular type of setup, um, you'll notice I normally favor targeting Ramu first. And that's simply because Bunny Gloves also gives the boost magic attack. And so... I'm trying to buff that up as much as possible and then switch over to uh, Shiva just so I can hit her as hard as I can because I am lacking a little bit of fire potency and so I'm trying to kind of make up for that difference. Okay, coming into this fight, the beginning is very specific for me. So I usually switch to Shiva and I'm timing spiritual harmony, but I'm looking at Tifa's limit or her ATB gauge because I don't want her to auto cast. So then I'm going to do one D faith on Shiva, switch over to Ramu, wait for my bar to fill almost all the way to full, start with the uh, bunny gloves move. And that's just because I want the, um, you know, her buff to magic attack to last as long as possible. Then always switching back to Barret and using his uh, debuff, then switching back to Aerith, switching stances so that we can heal immediately after this first move. All right, while you're in the stance switch, go ahead, heal with Aerith, switch over to Tifa, get one extra hit in on Ramu, then switch to Barret. You're going to be uh, debuffing. Actually, switch to Aerith. And the reason is, if you are on Barret, a lot of times Aerith will auto cast something you don't want her to cast. And I really wanted to get the heal off. So then come over to Barret and then Tifa. Just basically start debuffing their magic as much as possible. Get one spiritual harmony in for your magic defense buff. And then you're just ready to take the next hit. 
I'm usually trying to, when these hang things happen, to be on Aerith so that I can heal as soon as possible after the move hits. You're going to be a little bit short on ATB here, but you just wait for it. Cast it, and then immediately come over to Barret and Dorsal Fin shot Ramu, because we want him down, but we don't want to get him down too far, because I don't want to mess with the pattern, so I'm trying not to actually break his gauge yet. Then come over to Shiva. I usually like to do two dorsal fin shots on her to give her the max uh, fire decrease. And then come over to Tifa and just start uh, whacking on her for a while. Then with Barret, you're going to want to make sure that their magic attack is down as much as possible. And the reason I'm trying not to break uh, Ramu's gauge is if you break it before this moment, uh, you get a different pattern, and that's not the pattern that I was mostly getting, and I wanted everything to be very familiar. Now here, normally, uh, the goal is to do the double summon before, uh, for you, right? Crimson Flare plus um, Leviathan before this happens. However, I messed it up because I was trying to get off another Spiritual Harmony, because one of the things they do uh, to your tank right before they do this move is they actually lower the magic defense. And so I even messed it up to the point of not even switching stances for Ramu's hit, which is why Aerith is so low. However, it will be okay. You want to have ATB saved here on Barret going into this. I usually do two circles, then I switch over. Also, whenever I see Aerith's ATB in the beginning, I always switch to her and do a heal. I don't even switch stances because I'm usually a little bit close on time and you're gonna have plenty of time to get everybody healed up during the interrupt now i'm just gonna start doing damage and again uh, trying to make sure tifa keeps her magic buff and then i'm planning to go directly on to shiva because she already has the max debuff from those diamond breaks uh, that was the dorsal fin so she is basically gonna be taking the most damage uh, here we see diamond dust queued up and so I want to get off a of Spiritual Harmony before that happens. Although I think I was a little bit worried about Aerith's HP, so instead I actually single target cured her, which I actually think was not the optimal play. I think I should have, or I might have been worried that Spiritual Harmony wasn't going to give me the magic defense. Kind of in the moment sometimes, it's a little bit hard to know. But again, as usual, um, showing that even without you know, optimal play, this can still be cleared. You can make some minor mistakes. You just can't make any major ones. And I'm always also looking at the HP of both and kind of trying to keep them as even as possible just to make things easy on me later. Here I use Breath of the Earth because I see that the double summon move is coming and I want everybody at max HP. I also want to get off of Spiritual Harmony. And I don't have enough ATB, I don't think, to do both of those before the double summon hits. Anytime you see the double summon start, they're going to buff both of their magic attacks. So that's when you start doing the defaith with Tifa, spam it, spamming your debuff with Barret, um, and then getting your summons off if possible before it actually hits. And so here I barely get in enough to have um, basically max, well mid-potency magic attack debuff. And Tifa survives with 1000 HP, so we're still good to go. Immediately heal, and looking at, uh, okay, now the triple cast comes. So this is all just Barret mostly, dorsal fin shot as much as possible. I do switch stances one time here, just to get the max uh, out of my heal, but after that, I am not going to switch stances if I use um, Aerith's heal, but I will be trying to use it as much as possible just to give Barret ATB because his diamond break is really the most important thing during this phase. And also, just remember, Shiva's the only one that has to be broken during this particular phase. We get him broken, time to heal up, get everybody back. Um, after I heal, I'm probably going to be looking to do um, magic, you know, a magic defense buff for my team as well. There it comes. And meanwhile, I'm just hammering away on Ramu, trying to lower his gauge and build up Tifa's magic attack. Uh, again, anytime he he starts a move, you can see he's got high potency magic attack buff. 
So I'm looking to try to get as many defaiths and ener energization shots in as I can. And so we're looking pretty good here. We've got all of our buffs. He's debuffed. This shouldn't be too bad. I'm gonna be looking to heal immediately after this with Aerith. And now, because I know that, you know, Ramu's a little bit lower, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on Shiva. Trying again to keep them kind of as close as possible, but always prioritize, um, like, prioritize debuffing their magic over doing damage is kind of how I usually play this. Um, and so, as soon as I see that or hear that animation with the lightning, knowing that they're starting that move, I am trying to debuff them as much as possible and make sure that I have the magic defense buff up with Aerith so you can survive because. If I don't have that done, I've, I've gotten wiped. Well, not wiped, but Tifa dies. And if Tifa dies, well, if anybody dies this early, the run's just over. We take the double move, or the double summon move again. Tifa again barely survives, but it's, it's enough. And at this point, I kind of know that I'm entering the home stretch because their HP are, is pretty low. Targeting Shiva here because of the fact that she's significantly higher in HP at the moment So just trying to make sure I'm getting as much of that in as possible and you every time they finish the double summon You do have you know a window to get in your your breaches and everything like that Ramu here starts his judgment bolt. So D faith immediately D faith again and then I'm in a spiritual harmony. I'm going to debuff again with Barret just to make sure that that gets to mid potency. I'm a little worried about Tifa's HP, which is why I popped Aerith's limit here. In, in retrospect, again, I don't think this was optimal. I think she would have survived and it would have been fine. However, better safe than sorry, especially when you're this close to the end. Judgment Bolt hits, we're gonna try to immediately heal with Aerith and also provide everybody ATB and then immediately go into just using your water attacks on Ramu. Also again, simultaneously buffing Tifa's magic attack. And now I see that I need to switch back to uh, Shiva because Ramu's getting pretty low. Shiva's also starting up her Heavenly Strike, which is a single target attack and it's gonna be targeted at Aerith, so I'm really not worried that she's not gonna survive. But we get the uh, Spiritual Harmony off anyway, just to take the least amount of damage. And at this point, I'm almost certain that it's a clear. Uh, things have been going pretty well. We've survived all the big moves, and now we just need to lay on the DPS as much as possible. Uh, Judgment Bolt obviously is a thing, so I go ahead and use Aerith's, uh, you know, her ultimate weapon just to kind of keep everybody up and preserve as much as possible. Tidal Wave here I thought would, would finish him off. It, it didn't quite finish him off, so he needs one more attack. And now we're on to Shiva. Gonna go ahead and use the Crimson Flare. Or, okay, debuff him, debuff her first just to make sure we're doing max damage. Crimson Flare, this will boost uh, Tifa's fire damage, and it should be one more hit here from Tifa, and that will finish the fight. And that greater magical focus that she does, that kind of stuff, along with like debuffing your ice, is why you don't want to kill one of the summons significantly faster than the other. But that is Shiva and Ramu EX2, the double summon clear. Hopefully this guide helped you guys clear it. Hopefully going through the team setup and, and trying to be as um, you know articulate as possible about what I was doing helps you guys figure this out. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support. And as always, thanks for watching.